I'm going to tell you something about what is a lakehouse. Now, a lakehouse is a way to make data available for analytics. But we are doing analytics for a long time already before lakehouses were a thing. So the way data was made available traditionally for analytics was by the means of data lakes in data warehouses. Now, data lakes are a place where you can store massive amounts of data at a very affordable price. So it's a very scalable architecture that can take on a lot of data. However, this data doesn't originate in a data lake. It comes from somewhere. It comes from your business data. And your business data can be operational or real-time. Operational means that it's data in your databases, in your SAP systems, and so on, so-called systems of record. And the way you get this data into a data lake is by means of either ETL, for extract, transform, and load, or in a real-time manner by change data capture, or CTC. But they can also take data from messages, message buses such as Kafka, where you have data that's coming in in real time, being it, for instance, IoT messages and things like that. And then, in this case, you're streaming this data in. You're doing a stream data and lending stream data ingestion into your data lake. And when you have it in that place, you can now start to apply certain analytics step steps or the disciplines on this data in the data lake. Typically, when you have fresh data, new data, you start by doing some data discovery. So you discover the data, the quality, semantics, what it is, is it like to work with this data. And when you have gained enough understanding of the data, you progress to data preparation. So you pre prepare the data, for instance, to take out noise or things that are not wanted, to cleanse it, to filter it, and so on. Maybe you also normalize some data, like timestamps getting aligned to the same timestamps in different data sets. The next step that you're doing, you're optimizing this data to put it into a format, into a layout, into a table structure, or just also file formats, like, like columnar formats, that are optimized for analytic consumption. When you have done that, then you can start to drive home some of the value by doing things like a batch analytics, a batch query, for instance or a set of batch queries, and the results of that you're putting into maybe a report that you produce automatically every night, and that you can send to your consumers. When it, however, comes to higher qualities of service for analytics that you need to serve, like, for instance, I need to do analytics in an interactive way. Right? Some a user sitting in front of a real-time dashboard, refreshing it, and you immediately need to get the new results displayed. Then this is something which is not necessarily a good place for a data lake. A data lake is not built and optimized to serve low latency interactive queries. It can also be that you need to do transactionally consistent analytics, right? You have continuous inflow of new data, and you just need to guarantee that there is always completely consistent data in your analytic results. Right? This is also something where a data lake is struggling. Or another thing is security, where it's need to be sure to say, okay, I need to have fine-grained access control. Which fields of data, which records, which rows can I display for a certain user in a certain situation for compliance reasons or other security boundaries? So you need things like fine-grained access control. When you want to do that, data lakes are not a good choice. For that reason, you very typically find data lakes combined with data warehouses. Now, data warehouses are a deeply integrated, highly optimized way to store and analyze data. They are deeply optimized, but it also means they are actually much more expensive, cost expensive for the same amount of work or the same amount of data compared to a data lake. But they're giving you these higher qualities of service. It also means that you have a step in between. Once you have the data in a data lake and you've prepared it, and then you want to go to these other use cases here, you again need to ETL the data. You need to transform it. So there's also a latency problem. The data might not be as up-to-date here as it is here. Right? But that's how you did analytics all along. Data lakes and data warehouses were a very typical thing that you combined together. But now let's talk about data lake house and how data lake house solves this problem. Now the key thing is that the data lake house is a one-stop shop for doing all of that. So it's one form factor, one system, where you can take your data from other systems or from, the, from a real-time feed, ingest it, and get it from data discovery up to the real productive interactive consumption with BI dashboards, for instance. And the important thing is 
that a data lake house now is effectively a data, a data lake as an architecture. It is a data lake, which means that it has also the, the same cost profile. So it's highly affordable, highly scalable, like a data lake. So that's benefit number one. But at the same time, it gives you a data warehouse set of qualities. So quality of service of a data, data warehouse, like transactional consistency, interactive response times, fine-grained access control. So both of these things are now together in a one-stop shop form factor. And the way the data lake house achieves this, when still retaining an open data lake architecture, is by adopting a set of open, new, optimized, open table formats. So this is really open, open source communities that have emerged and standards from these communities that define these table formats that enable these higher qualities of services but still retaining an open architecture. And another key thing that is important now for the data lake house, right, you can go from left to right, which also means in terms of the data formats and data modalities that this, this system can take. It doesn't have to be entirely fully structured like in the data warehouse, you can take on actually any data modality. And data modality now really means different types of data, different unstructured binary formats, image data, document, text data, and so on. All of that basically in one form factor. And that's the attractiveness of lake houses and why everybody's talking about these today. A lake house is a one-stop shop that takes the best of both worlds, the data lake architecture and the data warehouse qualities of service.